and start recording. Good morning. Happy Monday. Sunny day, sunny, shiny week apparently. It is indeed. Welcome to the Shack Shack. Safe, happy and creative. Stay home and craft. Is anybody there apart from me? Paul, are you in the building? I hope so. Um, Paul, if you're there, just let me know that the sound is good and that we're here together. And for those of you who are in the building with us in the Shack Shack, if you have any questions or if you're looking for anything, Paul's your man. So let's have a look. I know I'm always early to the party. It's only just to make sure that the the reason I stare is because that's when I stare you're just above the camera. There's a dial that tells me whether the batteries are working or not. And my eyes don't stretch that far. I need a I need um what are this binoculars <laughs> telescope. <laughs> Come on in. I hope that there's somebody there apart from me. Oh, let me see. Let me see. Doesn't look like it. I'm not even going to bother looking. You must be. Come on in, let's have a cup of tea and wait for a few to arrive. I had a little bit of a hoo-ha with the buttons today. Pressed the wrong button, deleted the lot. So, I had to start again. <laughs> Sound is good. Well, I'm glad to hear it, Paul. Okay, so today, let's have a look. We'll wait till, we'll wait till 10 o'clock because I'm sure that There'll be people late to the party. The roads are getting busier now, aren't they? Yeah, I mean, I haven't been, I haven't left except, I haven't left the house except to go for a walk in the woods. And yesterday I was particularly interested in the rolling hills and the fields, you know. Yeah, for a good reason. I was um, just looking at the perspective and looking at the different patterns in the fields and the different colours and shades and I thought that is what we want to do do in the shack. So I was very, uh, yeah, very attentive on, on our walk through the woods yesterday, looking out through the trees. Got some lovely views up there and no people, no people. They're all in town queuing up outside Primark. figure that one out. You thought I was going to say something else then, didn't you? No, 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 no. Come on in. One minute to ten. I've already got the bus warmed up. We've got a tank full of petrol. The Shack Shack bus is leaving the depot. It sure is. We're going to keep it safe. Going to keep it safe. We don't need a passport for this one. Just chill. Just chilling. Okay. I'm sure that our our little Shack Shack family is going to get smaller now as the days get warmer and people have to go back to work and the shops open. And... But I think that's OK, personally. I'm fine with that, you know. I'm fine with that. Absolutely fine with it. As long as you're here and I'm here, it's good enough for me. So let's have a look, shall we? It's 10 o'clock. 10 o'clock. Welcome to our safe uh, haven of creativity. Yeah, let's have a look at what we're going to do today. I thought it would be nice to get on the bus. You know, just get on the bus. We don't have to go anywhere. You know, we don't have to pack a suitcase. Let's just get on the bus and open our eyes. Where we live here in Crowborough, I mean, we live in East Sussex, but two minutes up the road is Kent. And I come from Kent. I'm a Kent girl. I come from, well, I come from London originally, but Kent was where I went to school and where my mum and dad still live. And I guess that's what I consider to be my hometown is the Medway Towns. Um, and Kent is the southeast of England. Um, many of you will be familiar with it. Most of you will have travelled through it to get to Dover, to get to France. So, and it's... It's not the only place in England that has orchards, of course it's not, but it is what one calls, what's famously, it's always been called the Garden of England. And I thought it would be nice if we got on the bus, on the Shack Shack bus, and we just had a little tour of the Garden of England, because it's, it's a coastal county, there's lots of coast, lots of seaside, you know, you've got your Margate, 
you've got your your dim church you've got your whitstable you've got your ramsgate your broad says it's all around that edge dover folkestone la 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 see it's all familiar to me because this is where i come from who here is from kent who's familiar with all the different kentish towns and the sites in kent kent's very famous for its apples and its cherries and charles dickens once said and it's women wonder what he meant yeah he said that everybody knows Kent. It's the county of apples, cherries, and women. Mm. And hop farms. Got a lot of hop farms here. So I was thinking that we could get on the bus because sometimes just looking out of the bus, if, you, if you're on, especially on a double decker, if you're on the top floor, you can, at the top deck, you can see for miles, can't you? Hey? Outside our house, there's a there's a bus, t uh, two bus stops. I remember when we first moved here, to me, that wasn't a good thing. I thought, oh, you know, people sitting on the top deck staring into my bedroom is like, I'm not happy about that. But now I'm really not happy that they're looking in the bedroom, but happy that the number 29 bus on one side of the road goes to Brighton. Yes, it does. And on the other side of the road, it goes to Tunbridge Wells. And it's a double decker. Woohoo! I know, aren't we lucky? I remember telling our Mark, um, I'm sure I've already told you this, but I remember, well, the longer we hang out, the more I'm going to start repeating myself, people. <laughs> um, and I can remember telling Mark, because we moved while he was living in the States at university. Still, still lives there. And, uh, and I remember saying to him, the only thing about the houses that we're moving to, because we were living in the middle of a field before, like a, an old farm in the middle of a, a, a huge, a huge uh, estate. On well, our estate, we rented a farm on the estate, but it was in like 250 acres of beautiful countryside, Kentish countryside. And uh, I remember saying to Mark, the only thing about where we're moving to in Crowborough, Mark, is it's got a bus stop right outside the door. He said, thank God for that. <laughs> and he's the first one. When he comes home, he's always, you know, I'm just going to pop into Tunbridge Wells, Mum. And then you see him standing at the bus stop. And he said, it's brilliant. You literally, you could see the bus at the end of the road and you just dive out the front door. <laughs> Kids. Right, so this is what I have a plan. Shall we, shall we have a look at it? Let's have a cup of tea. Come on. How was your weekend? Did you watch the funeral on Saturday? Well, that was a sad affair, wasn't it? I felt so sorry for the Queen. Cried my eyes out, poor little old lady. So isolated. You know, just sitting there on her own. Mm. Yeah. Certainly brought that home, didn't it? And what a great man, you know. What a fabulous, what a fabulous ambassador he was. And good looking fella too. Even in his even in his eighties, in his nineties, he was still so good looking. He was such a handsome chap, wasn't he? Anyway, yeah, and I think that's why I forgive me for not blogging this weekend, because I didn't blog this weekend. And um I just I kind of went to the back of the cave a bit, really. You know, just wanted to switch off. But I'm back today. And I'm the driver of this Shack Shack bus. <laughs> so let's get started. And I, I, all you're going to need, you know what we started when we started the Shack Shack, all we need is a pencil, tra should do some tracing paper, tracing paper and a piece of paper. Okay, ruler's good for this one. And I just want to show you, I, I, I've had a sort of a rough idea, because you've got to map out where you're going. You've got to have a rough idea of where the bus is headed. We're not going to Tunbridge Wells and we're not going to Brighton, but we're going sort of around the houses, around this area. And for those of you who come from Kent, you'll be very familiar with the, with the names and the places and, the, and the, the Vista. And those of you who are not from Kent, um, well, welcome to the Garden of England. Um, and also, you may come from another beautiful place with orchards and rolling hills and undulations, you know, and maybe you'll, you'll modify your artwork, your, your masterpiece to reflect your part of the world, you know. 
but I'm going to keep it simple for me and stick to Kent. So let me show you what I had in mind and I'll just map out the idea and then you'll understand. So let's call it three pictures, right? Three little snapshots. So when we're on the bus, look, here's the road. I just thought it was a, I came up here yesterday afternoon and I just spent an hour with my pencil and I just looked at what I, what, what I, what I want to do with you. And I thought this would be really nice if we're, Let's pretend we're going to do three pictures. Well, we're not pretending, we're doing it. Three little pictures and they're little vignettes, little tiny snapshots looking through the window of a bus. So that's why you can see the road, right? Look, the road through Maidstone and Yalding and then we're going to go to Tunbridge and East Peckham and then we may even end up in Dimchurch near Dungeness and look at the lighthouse. So we've got the water as well. But what I wanted to do, and I just need my pencils and then I'll, I'll, I'll just sort of clarify, if I may, what my thoughts were on this. Let me get my HB pencil. So the idea is that we've got these three little snapshots through the windows, you can call these, a, right? But they're independent, but they're linked. So in other words, if the, the hill, you'll see it goes through there, it comes up there and then it goes down there and there's the water. So, so this undulating, this line goes through all three of our pictures and then so does the something. So, for example, we're not going to get further than doing the layout today, but I think it would be a really good lesson in creating a tessellated piece of artwork, an artwork that joins up. Yeah, so this joins to this one and this one joins that one. So we're going to get, we're really going to get an essence of this rolling hills idea. And the apples, the apple trees, they, they slot, they fall into the other one too. Now, let me just, let's, you've got to use your imagination. You've got to have a bit of vision, right? We're not just going to do one picture, then forget that one, then do the next one. You have to think of them in their entirety. This is going to be three pictures. Now, whether or not you just hang out with us and doodle a lighthouse and doodle a bit of water and doodle an apple tree and a ladder, that's it's entirely up to you. But I was thinking, wouldn't it be nice, because we, we talked a couple of weeks ago about, do you remember when I was saying about my sense of inadequacy, still hasn't gone away, but that feeling, why don't we put our artwork on the wall? Why don't we celebrate our art, you know? Why don't we? I mean, I'm not saying paint a mural or do a fresco. I'm not... I'm not suggesting that, but how about we think about doing three little pictures on the wall and they're all framed, you know, could be black and white, a little flash of colour, maybe a little bit of watercolour. Let's have a look at and let me show you what I mean. Because we've got, haven't we, we've got these mount boards that Dave cuts out, out of the stamp board. You know we've got these. So, and you know that they all sort of sit inside one another. So Paul will give you the, he will give you the links for these. But let's say, let's take a small one. Let's take the, this is six by six with a, with an opening. I would say that's probably a four inch opening. I reckon. Let's have a look. Let's have a look. Let's have a look. Yeah. So it's four inches and it's sitting in a six inch aperture. There you are. So let's, and it comes with the back, doesn't it? It comes with a stamp board for the back. So let's just isolate this one. Let's just pretend. So we've got that one. Okay. And then ignore that. And then that's going to be framed in there. So it's, I've, I've measured it all out. It fits like a treat. It fits like a charm. Okay. So the measurements, what we do now, this is one of the things is if you're going to frame something, it's easier to, to know what size you're going for. So that one, this would be lovely, won't it? There's a thought, right? There's a, there's a, there's the first one. Now, if you, this is just something that I'm aware of and I've got some really nice pieces of artwork. I ought to bring you, it's in my hallway. It's by somebody else. It's beautiful. And it's a tiny little picture. I would say that the artwork itself is even smaller than that. Or maybe it's because she, it's framed in a huge matching. See, let's take a large one. So now we're going large. 
see so you could it looks so nice it, it's the white space that creates the charm as well now so this one here for example this is in a much bigger frame so what I'm saying is you don't have to always restrict your artwork one of my favorite pieces of artwork now this is a nine inch and it's a six inch aperture so it's the one that this one sits in and then it goes to 12 inches which would be a little bit extreme on a on a little three and a half inch vignette or snapshot but if you if you were just going to do one picture then this might be a brilliant idea right if you're going to do a set of three next to each other wouldn't they look lovely if you did that one in there like that and then in next to it right not too far away you've got that one and we haven't finished this one we haven't started it yet and then of course we've got the and then along the bottom you see and that's what gives it the continuity or the flow it says kent the garden of england or it could say it could say you know any place that you want it to be wherever you are i'm just going with the garden of england because it's a pretty place i mean it's it's got its rough spots it's definitely got its rough spots it's real you know it's real but the apples I've got a big affinity for the apple apples the orchards I, I used to go I went apple picking didn't go so well and then um, you know the water and you know the thing about the water and I have to I'll tell you this when I, when I used to live in Germany I used to just love coming home when I saw those white cliffs of Dover ah <gasps> emotional right so that's what we're doing what do you feel about that? Yeah, are you happy with that? It's not, it's not difficult, it's arty. And also what I wanted to do, and this is where I'm gonna get in closer now, I wanted it to be an art project. I'm not gonna get into the whys and wherefores of, of all that, but I thought, wouldn't it be lovely with our doodle skills, you know, all the fields, and they've already, you know, they're being seeded now, it's already being drilled. You know, you, I was watching yesterday very carefully at all the lines and the rills and the, and you know the tram lines are there already in place, ready for the, and the ploughs and it, everything's already getting set now. And, and I thought what we could do to celebrate all the different crops and fields, we could put patterns in, lovely patterns change them do what you like this is just a rough idea just to give you a, a, an overall feel of what it looks like how do you feel about that is that going to be a nice project we love doing landscapes we love landscapes i know we do remember with the reflection masks we love all that i know we do so and it's not hard you know it doesn't want to be hard we don't we don't gather in the shack shack to to give ourselves a headache do we? <laughs> so, but there's a process. Like with everything that we do, there's always a process. And I've already had a couple of runs at it, so I know now, because I'm the bus driver, this is what we're going to do. So there we are. If you're in, you need a pencil, you need tracing paper, and then first of all, you need a bit of copy paper. Let me show you. And what we'll do is we'll map out, so we don't have to keep drawing it and drawing it and drawing it, Get a piece of copy paper. I'll come out a little bit so you can see. Oh, hey, hey, other way. I'll come out a little bit so you can see what I'm playing at. See, because this is going to give me the template underneath. See? So we want to map it out. I mean, this is a great way. If you wanted to make a great big frame and just have all three of them in one frame, then happy days. I thought it'd be nice to just do individual flowing undulations through the pictures i like that idea i if this comes out nicely it may well go on my wall because it's a little taste of home for me as well right so let me just put this over here and the first thing we're going to do is work out the sizes so it's only i've done two sets so that i can i've got a bit of a practice thing going on first of all i thought i might do six and then i thought crikey <laughs> I don't think so. Three will keep us busy. So I've got the three up here, but I've got the spare down here. Now, if I take a piece of three, three and a half by three and a half, okay, 
that they've got a puff on both, right? This is three and a half inches, okay? That's a three and a half. So the outer, so you know these, just to, so you understand. And what I did was to make, to sort of lay it out, I took three and a half pieces physically like this. Look, who says I don't practice me butterflies? Have you ordered yours yet? Right, there you go. So you've got, let me take a piece of coloured paper so you can see it better. Right, see? So three and a half, three and a half, and three and a half. Sits together lovely, okay? And then what we're gonna do, we're, just so that you understand how my little low level art head works. So I've got three and a half, three and a half, three and a half. That sits on there nicely. And then inside, within that, I've got another one that's three inches. So it's got a quarter of an inch edge. And my picture is three by, the picture is three, it's inside the frame, okay? So I thought I'll give myself a bit of wiggle room. <laughs> I'll give myself a bit of wiggle room. Right, and also three is a lovely size. So let's have a look. First thing we want to do, let's just figure this out. If you've got an inch ruler, is we're going to go three and a half. Now, if you've got a piece of the, you know, the card that we, the seven by seven stencil card that we give you, you could just draw around three of them, not a problem. I just wanted to show you how I got my spacing. But you can also, let me start with the fresh bit. You can take uh, three and a half inches or call it nine centimeters. It's about the same, okay? If you're using a centimetre ruler, it's about nine centimetres square. And if you're using a, um, an inch ruler, it's three and a half. OK. And if you're using a bit of card like this, <laughs> it's, it's three of these. <laughs> so it's whatever rocks your boat. What, which way do you want to go? I said, one thing I do need is the right glasses and then we'll just get the I, I won't be a total, no, I'll use the ruler, okay. So I'm going to go, I'm going to make a dot, let's have a look. I, I need to give myself enough room, so I'm going to go as close to this edge as I can, because I know I've got three and a half and three and a half, so it's ten and a half, so I've got about an inch of wiggle room, so I don't want to give myself, so one, two, three and a half goes to there, from there to there, dot, dot, and then I'm going to go up the other end. It's easier, <laughs> definitely easier. Otherwise it's all, let's do this. Right, so we've got three and a half up this end. Right, there you go. One, two, like that. And then you've got in the middle, you've got three and a half. You see? So you've got plenty of wiggle room. Okay. There you go. Three and a half. So now you can eyeball it so it's in the middle. And then if you want to bring these in a little bit now, that's in the middle. Three and a half. Okay, that's that side. So let's just give it that side first. Right, that's the middle one. Okay, that wasn't so difficult, was it? <laughs> and now you can decide where you want your... So that's going to be my three and a half there. And then the other three and a half is over here. So I'll just go... Just make it a little bit lower. So I go from there to there. Right, there you go. So there's my uh, de toit, my triptych or whatever. And the other thing is, if you were going to make this into a card, or you were, so you're still giving yourself enough room to fold it as well and have a little bit of a, an edge here. So if you did it there, it's just about the same amount. See what I mean? So there's a little bit of method in my madness. Right, so we've got three and a half, three and a half, three and a half. Then we're going to come down this way. So we're going to go three and a half downwards. That's it. One of the things about this ruler, this is an inch ruler that I've had forever. But the thing about the 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 centimeter one as well, right, if I'm going to go with the centimeters, the Pergamano ruler. There you go. What's great about it is all these grids as well. That's the handy bit. So I ought to really use what we sell and not what I what I like. <laughs> no, that's not what I mean. I'm an inch woman. I'm old. <laughs> right, nine. There you go. Let me pop that there, like that. So we've got nine centimetres. And then you see I'm using this line here to make sure that it's at a right angle. 
So I'll just make my little dots so I know where the nine centimeters, right there you go. So it doesn't end up as a trapeze. That'll do. Don't get too caught up in it. I mean, to be honest, to be what I did, <laughs> I did when I was doing it, I just drew round, I just drew round four of these. I did. I just drew round three of these. One, two, three. It's a lot faster. But, you know, what would, what would the experts say if they saw me doing that? <laughs> I was watching, I just finished watching it last night. Brilliant. Um, Leonardo, have you seen that? Uh, Leonardo, the, um, it is fabulous. Oh, no, that's not so fabulous. Hang on, I've got a massive wasp in here. <laughs> oh, you are joking. Hang on, let me just get a, a cup or something. <laughs> Sleepy wasp, huge Jasper. Jasper alert, Jasper alert. Hang on. <laughs> let me just, let me just get a... <laughs> I need a cup. Oh, look, is Potter. Right. <laughs> okay, so while you're finishing up your three, you do that while I sort this Jasper out. Hey, I don't want to kill him, um, but do us a favor and just work out your, your three boxes of three and a half inches. Look, I'll leave mine there. I'll leave the one that I've done there like that. There you see, spring is in the air. Come on, come on. I'm taking you outside. He's in here now. Oh, he looks angry. Come on then, little fella. Out you go. <laughs> I think it's be like the Flintstones. Out the front door, in the window. Go on, go and see your mates. Oh, hello, cat. It's all right, it was a wasp. What do you want? <laughs> I'm working. Go and play. <laughs> oh, it's all action here at the farm. <laughs> you haven't left me, have you? Don't tell me I'm on my own. Right, have you done your three? <sighs> it's okay. <laughs> Jasper alert. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't nature a wonderful boo-boo? Out of the corner of my eye, I thought, something's moving. And it was, it was a... You wonder where they come from, don't you, if every, if all the windows are shut. Mm. Right, okay. <laughs> so then, when you've done... Let's have a look. When you've done your three like that, then the next thing you want to do is do a three inch one on the inside. So I find that particularly simple just by eyeballing it. Okay, so at this point, if that's three and a half inches, then you want to do a three inch one on the inside. So just eyeball it. I'm going to come in so I can get over with my head. And all you want to do now is do like one, two, you just, you, what you're doing is just coming in a quarter of an inch on either side, right? Quarter of an inch square you want in the, in this corner, you want quarter of an inch. I mean, it hasn't got to be precision. It just needs to be like roughly right. Okay, so quarter of an inch box like that and then make a dot. And then, and then all you're going to do is join this up. And this is going to be your art edge, right? So you do three like that. There you go. And this is going to be your box inside. And you've got to do this really before you start your, your picture. So we're revving up the bus. We're all getting comfortable. Sun's pouring in. You're getting the sunglasses out. Okay. Come on. We've already had Jasper on the bus. <laughs> Spring is in the air. Isn't it? Hmm? Oh, that's all harmless. Well, not, in, not if you're allergic to them. Dave's allergic to uh, wasps. He, uh, he's an EpiPen carrier. Is anybody else an EpiPen carrier? Yeah. 
That's a bit of a monkey if you're a farmer, isn't it? There we go, and then we'll just join up the lines. And this is going to be our, our template. I don't really think, I think this is so simple, this one. I don't really think we need to do a digi download of this, do we? I don't think so. I think we really can do this by hand. There you go. So, and that's your, there you go. So now that's my, my template, my picture. Yeah. And then, see, when you pop that behind there, like so, let's have a look, see, that's the, I mean, I drew it again on there just because, but that's what gives me my, look, if you look at the empty one, if I want to do a line through here, right? So I'm going to draw mine here so you can see what we're doing. Yeah, these are the three we're going to do. And these are the three that we're going to do live, like together. And that works fine for me. What do you think? Yeah. Okay. Right. HB pencil. Only because this is the one, because we're going to transfer, aren't we? Obviously, one, two, three. If we transfer it, then it's going to be three, two, one. We could start at the lighthouse and go the other way. But the bus is definitely, we're going that way. We're going to the sea. We're not coming. <laughs> I said to Dave, <laughs> to Dave, I said, I want to get on the bus today with the shackers. And I want to go through the orchards of Kent. He said, nice, nice. I said, yeah. And then I want to go through the hop farms and that. He said, good, good. But I need the name of a town. I said, I can't remember. What's the name of a town on, on the beach that's got a lighthouse? Because I'd like to draw a lighthouse. He said, Beachy Head. I said, no, I don't really think. He said, he said, well, there is a lighthouse at Beachy Head. I said, I'm sure there is, Dave, but I don't really think I want to take 200 friends of mine to Beachy Head. It's kind of a, it's an association game, isn't it? <laughs> I said, come on, there must be a nicer place with another, you know, like a, a holiday kind of place. I mean, everybody that, you go to Beachy Head, it's not, I don't go there because it's just not, a, it doesn't sound like a place where you'd want to park your caravan, really, does it? <laughs> I'm sure it's lovely. I'm sure it's lovely. But anyway, so no, not beat your head. We're going to Dungeon. I said, well, Dungeoness doesn't even sound very nice. He said, dude, it's nice. He said, it's lovely in Dungeoness. I said, yeah, but it sounds like a dungeon. He said, what about Dim Church? I said, that's better. We'll go to Dim Church. <laughs> so, so we're going to Dungeoness. We're going to Dim Church near Dungeoness. So we'll stick with Dim Church. <laughs> it's, got, it's, it's how you pitch it, isn't it? It's how you how you present it. So we're going from you can make it really like we're going from Gillingham to Tunbridge to um, to Beachy Head. <laughs> It's like, do you want to get on that bus? Or would you like to go from Yalding, you've got to change the tone of the voice, Yalding through East Peckham to Dimchurch? I think I'll get on the second bus. <laughs> Agreed? <laughs> Agreed. Okay. So what we'll do now, get your pencil, you've got your, you've got your tracing paper and you've got your boxes. Right, and now we're going to add, oh, and, and also, <laughs> muy importante, have you got your rubber, your eraser pencil? You need your pink one. And then off we jolly well go. Be nice. So let's just get the old, get the old flow going first. Go really lightly to start with. Go really lightly, right? And then, and then and then decide. So for example, where do you want the, about half, let's just make where the joins are gonna, if, you, if you've got somewhere to go to, like, there you go, look. So it's gonna be a little bit higher there, and then it's gonna come down here, and then the bit, then about there, give yourself enough room. It's about the same, look, because of the water. So a bit about there, let's do that. Doesn't have to be exactly the same as mine, but at least it gives you a place, it gives you somewhere to go, see, and then up here, about an inch, about an inch because you want the house, don't you? Then you want to come down like that. Then you're going to go up the undulations and then down here again and then up again. Quite, right, you ready? 
So let's go. Let's go lightly, lightly, because it, otherwise you'll end up rubbing it out a dozen times. Right, so over we go. Over the hills, then down through the orchards, round near Maidstone and Yaldi, and then we go up through. There you go, get Fabersham, go round. Then we're going to come down and see a little glimpse of the old channel. Go past Beachy Head, we won't go there. Got enough room for a lighthouse, got a lovely little little cove, so you might wanna you might wanna come down a little bit further on that one. Give yourself a little enough of a ledge. I mean that's the drawer in us, right? The illustrator, right? You've got to at least give yourself enough of a ledge so that the lighthouse doesn't fall over. And then give yourself enough of a a bit here, right? So that you've got a bit of water to show for it. Right, there you go. So you've got a little bit of water, right, and then you can be a little bit jagged because it's like a coastal path. Right, there you go. Then it goes up, rolling hills. You haven't decided what to do with that yet. I'm going to come back down there. Right. I know. This isn't the hard bit. <laughs> but, 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 this sets the scene, right? If you, this is what gives us our, right, I'm happier with that now. Right, down it comes, round it goes, over it goes and up. Right, okay, and now we're going to concentrate on this bit here. So we want the apple trees, and the apple trees are really easy, they just look like clouds. So again, you're going to come in about, I don't know, you've got to give yourself enough room for the house and that. So if these are the apple trees, right, they're like, let's just do trees like that. Give yourself enough room for a house and then back the other way as well, like that. And then let's go through, okay, like so. And you can come up a little bit, look, make it a bit bigger if you want, like that. And then it goes further away as it goes towards that little house. So it's like the road's coming in and it's going out again. Okay, so that's our apple trees there. It's just a, a sea of them. And then we're going to put the, the when we put the um, the trunks in, do these like, oh, not like that, great. <laughs> let's do it, let's do a, let's do a little bit more of that. Right, and now we're going to put a V in there. So there's the trunk and there's the V. Just do a V because that's how you're going to make the tree look like it's, yeah? Do another V here. Where would a V sit? Like there would be quite good. There's a good V there. Now, I might want to make this a little bit taller here because I've got this idea for a ladder, right? So make this a bit higher. Come on. It's all right. This is where we can change it. We need to make this a little bit higher. So a little bit too... They're so heavily laden with apples, you'll only see a little tiny bit of the... Let's do that. Right, so we can get a ladder in there. Right, now let's start again. V, V, ladder, V, V. So we can leave a little bit of space for the ladder. And then we'll have another... It's too heavy, Barbara. Come up a bit. Like that. There you go. And then we'll put another V in there. That'll do. V there, V there, ladder there. Okay. Right, this is a sketch. This is where you get to change it if you don't like it. Isn't it funny how I like my first one and I'm not keen on this one? So let's go like that, like that. Okay. Have you got your, your trees sorted out yet? I'm still fiddling with my, my Vs. That'll do. Crikey, Barbara. This is pathetic. What I need to do is cover that up so I don't use what I'm doing. See, trying to copy is rubbish, isn't it? So let's just go like that. Right, and then let's just make the ladder there and then we'll make a V. Don't copy what you're doing, Gray. Just don't try to copy it. Just do something different and then it will work. It does usually. There you go. It's only when you start to try and copy, it's crap. Right, and then, the, then the, the ladder will go in there. That'll do. Right, okay. See, as soon as you stop copying, hand over. Okay. 
Now let's get some apple trees going and they're going to be a little bit more nice. I'll put another V in there like that. Cool. That'll do. I had two up there. I've only got one on that one. So don't matter. Okay. Got that going. God, blimey, that was hard work. <laughs> right. So now we've got that much done. So what we want to do next is have a look. Let's get in a bit tighter, shall we? And we'll have a look at the... Let's go in a bit further like that so we can see more what we're doing. And what we want to do now is put a little house here. So let's just put a little house there. Don't worry about the shape of it. It's just there, right? It's a little farmhouse. We'll put a couple of chimneys on it as well. There you go. Farmhouse. Right, that'll do. Door. Just leave it like that for now. We're not going to get caught up in the... We could give it a side, couldn't we? Got a bit of a, an old Wealdon look. Give it a couple of beams if you felt like it. Yeah, now it's looking very... Very Kentish. Right, OK, so that's that. We'll sort that out afterwards. That's just going to be in in that area. And let's do let's do the landscape next. So I still want to put a ladder in because I love the, the idea of having a ladder in the see like a ladder in. In the apple tree, so we're going to put a ladder now, let's have a think. That looks, that would work, I suppose, if you had it, you normally you'd prop it up against a, a tree though, a, a trunk, wouldn't you? So maybe we'll make a big trunk there, so it's propped up against something, otherwise you'd think it's not a place you'd, you'd, you'd put a ladder, is it? And we'll make the ladder so that it's, it's smaller at the top and larger at the bottom, yeah? rubbish today absolutely rubbish right here we go let's just make the bladder stop i'm swearing in my head <laughs> right so the ladder's fatter down the bottom and then we're going to make our little little rungs because let's do the rungs next right and the rungs get f wider as they go down okay and then they go like that let's just make the rungs and then and then the That'll do. That looks like the sort of ladder I'd feel comfortable going up. <laughs> right, there you go. It's all right for us. We're just sitting on the bus. That is some ladder. Right, that's it. Sorted. Ladder's in. I just have a memory of that, of the ladders being propped up against the trees. I thought I want to kind of, and then the, the trees are going to be quite gnarly, the old apple trees. Here we go. So you've got your V's in, and then and then off the V's you can put other branches, can't you? See? Up they go, like that. Put another one in there, another one up there. There, now it starts to look like it's it's actually, yeah, there you go. In they go. In go the other branches. It's going to be beautiful. Honest, honest, Gov. So you've got your trees in, and then of course we're going to put the apples in. So let's practice on a bit of scrap. What, what do we want to do with the apples? So the apples are like they go round and then like that, like a heart, but a round heart, and then a little. I mean, it's only a symbol. It's not. Don't start asking me what kind of apple. It's Cox's, okay? It's Cox's apples. My mum's favourite. There you go. So you're just going to go round in and then little ring like that that'll do could be cherries if you want but they look more like apple trees to me right so then the chip then the apples are just going to be just here and there this is an art this is art not it's not a, a study of apples it's just a nice it's more symbolic than anything isn't it 
Yeah, so before I was so interrupted, so rudely interrupted by that uh, wasp, right? I was talking about um, Leonardo, Leonardo, the series. Have you watched it? Um, is it on Sky? Very, very good. With Aidan Turner. We all know Aidan Turner from Paul Dark. Do you remember when he got his kit off in the fields? <laughs> Every every middle-aged woman in, in England was like, <laughs> well, it's the same bloke, but he plays Leonardo da Vinci. Very, very good. Very good indeed. I really enjoyed it. If you're looking for something good to watch, treat yourself to Leonardo, brackets, da Vinci. And uh, it's very interesting. And it's quite... Um, yeah, it was interesting. I liked, I, I enjoyed it a lot. And uh, he was so, so amazing. I mean, Leonardo da Vinci, he was a visionary, really. And what was really, what fascinated me was watching him, how he, um, this was fascinating, how he transferred. Have you, has anybody watched it apart from me? How he transferred um, art you know, like, we draw it on tracing paper, then we flip it over, then we transfer with our lines. Because I've always wondered, I've always wondered this, when he did his big frescoes on the walls, or I thought, even in Michelangelo with the Sistine Chapel, I thought, how did they draw those vast pictures? You know, what, can you imagine your arm? It would have, how could you draw masterpieces like that? on a wall and then and then be able to step away from it and it still all be in perspective and the answer came to me in this film it was that it was given to us it's really interesting he drew his picture his masterpiece in sections because he obviously didn't have enough parchment or paper you know he didn't have a piece that big he didn't make it that big so he he literally um he drew sections and then this was the fascinating bit he took a, a needle or a tool, like our um, one needle bold embossing tool. So once the line art was established on a piece of paper, then he took a needle tool and he perforated. I know, there we are, that this was 1400 and something. Here we are in 20 hundred and something, 2000. So. Still pretty much doing the same thing. But what he did was to transfer it to the walls, right? He perforated the line art, just like we do in, in parchment art. So there were holes in the line art. Then he spliced, in, te in graphic terms, it's called like splicing. So he took all the bits, like he drew, he drew half the horse here, right? And then the other half here, and then the head there. And then he spliced it all together. And then they attached it to the wall. They attached it to the wall, okay? And then when it was on the wall and it had all the line art, had all the perforated holes in it, then they took like, it looked like a bag. It must have been, it must have had charcoal or soot, soot, something black, right? And then they pounded it. It looked like chalk, but it was black. And then they pounded it. It was in, in, in wrapped in, in a cloth and they just kept pounding it against the, the drawing, okay? And then when they removed they had the outline, they had the draw, and they still had the drawings then to do the infill and the detail. I know, it's fascinating. Absolutely. I enjoyed that part of the story or the film as much as I enjoy, you know, the technical, the, the, the techniques. I enjoyed that and his sketches as much as I did the storyline. So now let's just, just leave the little house there. So we've got a little barn or a little house, little Wilden farmhouse. Right, there you go, farmhouse, orchard, landowner. Right, and then what we'll do is we'll bring this this one down. This is another hit hill now in the background. So bring that down like that and it goes up behind, let's say, like that. There's one like that. Then we'll bring another one in here like that. And then we'll bring another one in further up. So this is another hill. So we can, we can bring them in anywhere you like, look. So this one, cover that up. So stop copying it, Grey, because it's freaking me out. See, I'm much better when I just figure it out by myself. There you go, like that, like that, like that. That one's there, that one's coming down there. So you could put another couple of little trees. Here we go, look. Make a little cluster of apple trees there, 
and then you've got your little V's there as well. Okay, so we know that this goes on and on, this orchard. There you go. Put another little cup in there as well, couldn't you? Did I? No, I didn't. I made that into fields. But you could. You could put another little set of apple trees in there because they do go in like serious rows, don't they? There's, a, um, there's an orchard, like massive orchard on the way to work, but it's so badly neglected. So badly neglected. It's sad, you know. It's like it's a family affair, um, but it feels to me like they've lost it. You know, they, 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 it's overwhelmed them. Something's happened and, yeah. And yet over the road here, on the way to Tunbridge Wells, there's, um, there, literally I could walk, it's two minutes from here. And um, the, the, as far as the eye can see, rows and rows and rows and rows of apples just orchards and they're immaculate like mm, beautiful just phenomenal and there's a little farm shop and no none of this pon posh farm shop needs to say that um it's just literally barrels of apples out the front you know depending on which field it came in off i mean there's something to be said for that isn't there okay so so i've got my my fields might have too many there said the artist Right. Amazon Prime, apparently, Paul says. Hmm. There you go. Amazon Prime. Well worth, well worth watching. Really good. Especially if you like, um, matey, Aidan Turner. Woohoo! Yeah, put a little tiny bird in the background. See, bring it down lower and it looks even further away. Right, so now we've got this going. And now what we want to do is create some fields. So let's do, so for the patterns, you see, so we've got a field there. We've got a little field there. We've got a field, this one looks a bit ropey. I think that one looks a bit dodge. Got the apple, the ladder. It's lovely, that is. Right, and then this is going to come down smoother like that. That's better. Right, woof, like that. See, and then what you could do is if you wanted to, you could bring that back up the top there. So it's like all the way around and it comes off to this one. See, and then this one. Uh, but you've got to leave this because in a minute we're going to put hops in this one. I haven't figured out how to draw them yet, but it's OK because we won't get to that till Wednesday. <laughs> as long as I'm just a little bit ahead of you on the bus. <laughs> be fine. I got excited and went straight to the end. I went straight to Beachy Head. <laughs> For those of you who aren't from England, Beachy Head is a place on the south coast where people go when they're desperate and it's a, it's like um, it's a sheer drop. I'll say no more. OK, and so <laughs> we're not going there. The bus is going to Dimchurch. <laughs> <laughs> Got a beachy head. Right, so now let's put some let's put some hills in because this is where we get arty. And first of all, I think we'll start up here and we'll put a couple of hills, right? Because these are rolling hills. So we'll put a couple of hills in this area here. Okay. So these are little separations of hills. Look, I'll show you. There's a little hill up there. There's a field. And there's another field. And then you could do another field there. Right, so these are fields. And then there's another field at the back there like that. So fields, 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 all different crops and things and patterns. And what we're going to do is rather than draw I mean, carrots and potatoes, what we're going to do is break it all up with lovely patterns. And now what we can do, I'm going to cover this up and just go with my head. So it's easier. So we just want to put in some of these lovely undulations. Right, so I'm going to go like that and I'm going to come down like that. And then I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to make one a little bit, a bit more like that. And then I'll bring another one in like, like that. That's nice. So you've got different, thing about Kent is very hilly, very, very hilly. And then let's just make a path. That'll be our starting place. Right, so let's just make a path 
from the... Look, we know how to do this. So it looks like it's a real... Right to the door. There you go. So we've got a really good path there. Doesn't it look like it's coming down the hill? Right, there you go. So then you go over the top like that. Feel You do that with a bit more confidence. Yeah, it is very hilly. I did my driving test in Gillingham, right? And it's not for the faint-hearted. You go up Chatham Hill or anywhere around Luton, that area where I did my test, and you would definitely want to practice your hill starts before you take your test in the Medway Downs. It's like San Francisco, but it is, seriously. Um, and so it's very hilly, very undulating. Um, it's not flat, like, you know. Like, like the Netherlands, it's the opposite. So there you go, doesn't that look good? Um, so there's there's our path, and that sort of establishes now our our patterns. And now what we could do is just just make some boxes, really. Look, I'm just gonna take, a, take one down like that, and then let's go, let's just make a line. Doesn't matter, it's, it don't get caught up in where it has to be. Right, it can come in, it can go out. That looks good, doesn't it? A bit further up the top, you see, because of the perspective. See, so it's coming down like that. That was another thing. He was a right perfectionist, old Leonardo. I mean, good grief. Okay, so they've done all that work. You know, like the Last Supper, the beautiful picture. They've done all the work. They've done all the sketching. They've, he's been, on, he's been up. The whole team have been up there whitewashing, putting down an undercoat first so that it, it the colour stays true, right? So you imagine all these blokes have got this great big wall. They've done all the prep, they've they've primed it, all dry and that. They've done all the perforating, they've done all the padding, they've got the they're down to putting the veins in Jesus' hand. They're that finished. Right, and he walks in one morning. I bet he wasn't the most popular bloke on the team. Right, Leonardo walks in and he goes, the, ce the ceiling's too low. <laughs> they all, the whole team looks at him like, are you kidding me? He went, the ceiling's too low. The perspective, because it, the whole idea of this Last Supper picture was the perspective. It was like, it was a, the wall in a dining room. And, and the idea, I think it's in Florence. Don't quote me on that. And this dining room, it, it, the idea was that it, because of the perspective of it, it was like you were dining with, with Christ, right, at the Last Supper. And he had that table, you know that famous picture with all the guys, all the intrigue and all the ugly faces all plotting. And the, But you were dining. And he's walked in after they're pretty much, I'd say, 80% there. And he said, ceiling's too low. <laughs> Start again. Start again. Are you kidding me? And they did. Yeah, so yeah, it, but he was obviously, he was at the top of the scaffolding as well. And he, he was so right. He was so right. He said, when they stand up, they'll hit their heads. And all the guys were like, yeah, but it's a painting. They're not going to stand up. And he went, no, the perspective is wrong. And they had a right old Barney about it. And then he, um, he made them start to do it again. And I had to admit, when, he'd, when they'd repainted it and they'd made the ceiling three foot higher, it made total sense. It was like obvious. They would, they would have been, they must have been, they would have sitting in there doing their last supper like that, right? And if they'd stretched or done that, they'd have touched the ceiling. And he was right, it was wrong. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's one thing us go, ah, oh, no, this is rubbish. Let's start with another bit of tracing paper. Imagine you've done that entire fresco. And then the boss comes in and goes, right, start again. White out. <laughs> and no amount of that's going to help you, is it? <laughs> yeah, I really enjoyed it. It was a real, it was a fascinating series at so many different levels for this crafter, you know. Really, really interesting. <sighs> yeah, so so we've done our, we've done our fields now. This looks good. I'm going to sharpen my pencil now because now we get to put some patterns in. We get to put some different patterns in. And I'm suggesting, okay, that before you just put it in here, that you practice a couple of different patterns over here. So, for example, this is going to be so easy for us, but simple little patterns like, say, dots and then 
dots like that and then dots over here so that's one way of you could fill a like I did one field like that right um, spirals these are good but then again you've got to know which way do you want to go with the spiral and do you want them to be smaller at the top because again think last supper smaller at the top and bigger down the bottom I definitely think hey listen if Leonardo was here he'd be having a conniption right he is called a polymath. I looked him up, right? I said, what's a polymath? It must be somebody that's a polymath, right? I've never heard of that word before. A polymath is a person who has a wide, a wide and deep knowledge of, um, of like many specific and very complex things. So a polymath, he was a polymath. And a polymath is a person with a wide and deep knowledge of many specific and complex things. I mean, he wasn't just a painter, was he? He was a sculptor, he was an engineer, he, he built bridges, he built canals, he built, he, he built dams, he built weapons. He was an engineer and, yeah, and he was really good at drawing bodies. He, he had deep... Um, knowledge of an understanding of the anatomy spent a lot of time in in morgues studying bodies i know um but there you go polymath and i said to dave i said well it's like us crafters then <laughs> didn't know you were a polymath did you <laughs> yeah it was fascinating though right simple stripes that'd be a good one let's do a simple stripe on this one here OK, but the stripe, let's think, think, um, you've got to kind of think a little bit like, see this, see the perspective, it's coming closer to the road. OK, it's coming closer to the road. Now, what I am going to do, though, see, because we're just making pictures like this that, you know, what I've forgotten to do. Oh, Barbara. It's all right. That's all right. We haven't done enough yet to take out the bottom bit like that. That's all right. That's going to help us. Take out the bottom bit like that because we need the road where the bus is. Otherwise, the bus is going to be in the ditch and make a little road that's going to be, I would say, oh, how, how big do I think? It doesn't need to be half an inch. Half an inch is a bit strong, I think. Just under half an inch. Just eyeball it, right? And But bring it all the way along. I'm going to go just under half an inch, like that. And I'm going to come all the way along, like that. One, two. I've just closed down my... I've made my picture area smaller. OK? Made my picture area smaller. Because I want... I mean, you might not... You may say, oh, I don't want to put the road in. Cool. Good job that you didn't then. Right, I'm going to put my road in because I just want to get that feeling that we're going along on the bus. So this is just going to be the road along here, OK? But it's up to you whether you add that or not. But you wanted to kind of get this in the square, if you get what I mean. I nearly forgot it. That's it. That's all right. Listen, <laughs> think, think Michael... Uh, Leonardo, at least we didn't get all the way along and then I go, oh, hang on a minute, we're going to have to start again and <laughs> lift the whole lot off. But I reckon that's good enough. And then I've got that, yeah, that'll do. That looks quite good, actually, down the bottom. And then right off the edge of the page. Good job I spotted that before we went too far, Leonardo. OK. And so, my friends... We've got our pretty much. We've got our. We've got our road in. We've got our apple trees. We've got our. Yeah, we've done all that. And now we're going to do our stripes. Cool, it's a good job I spotted that. Right, stripes in there. Think, think perspective. Think Last Supper. Bigger down the bottom. Like that. All big bigger. Right, so you're going to do your stripes. I'm going to put another stripe in there, like that. 
and then you're going to make other patterns so let me let me just show you what we've got and i want you to fill your 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 fields with different patterns so this is a really cool one right here so you go like that so you can go like that and then it goes to there then you go like that then you go where you going like that no like that and then like that then like that then like that you see so you're making fields um, and then when you've got those patterns in place you leave that one alone then maybe you'll make some lines going this way okay and then as they come down closer to the road they're going to get bigger right so think perspective I mean, I'm going to do this in my own time and then maybe you'll do dots and the dots will be smaller at the top and then as they come down they'll get bigger so that by the time they get to the front of the picture they'll be bigger so it's just a little lesson in 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 perspective really and you can make as many as many fields as many patterns that kind of that greek patterns are really good one you know that one that goes like it goes in on itself like a, a a, a diminishing box that's quite a nice pattern too so so my polymath friends what I want you to do is between now and um, and Wednesday take a good look at this one let's just put it up close to this camera so you can see it hang on a minute right have a good look and we're just going to do different patterns dots lines zigzags whatever you fancy okay and and that's going to be the recurring th thing all through whether they go, they're going down in that area then on this one we're going to I'm going to figure out how to put some to represent the hop farm we'll put an oast house in that one and then maybe the the lines will go in a different direction on the third one but they will all have what they will have in common with each other apart from that road and that meandering hill line what they will have apart from the undulations is the patterns in the fields because that in Kent is everywhere and it is it's like patterns little dashes little dots you know it's it's, it's wonderful when you look closely um, so there we are that's what we're going to do on Wednesday uh, what can I what, what do I want to tell you don't forget on Friday we're gonna we're gonna be doing our moment of clarity at three o'clock and if you still want to you can buy these stamps beautiful cherry green stamps and i'm going to show you how to work with them at three o'clock on friday these are fabulous they come with your masks and treat yourself to some um to some parchment because i want to show you a trick okay so treat yourself this is indian summer we can use indian summer waimea falls shenandoah Paul will give you the link for that and then the other thing is tomorrow at 10 o'clock is Groovy Tuesday with Paul himself so um, for all you parchers out there 10 o'clock tomorrow Paul will be keeping you company I'll be back on Wednesday carrying on and we'll be on our bus I hope you brought a packed lunch because we're not getting off the bus we're not going to stop you know <laughs> um, but anyway so that's what we're doing today. Rolling Hills, Wednesday, Hop Farm. Lots of love. Thanks for your help, Paul. Bye-bye now.